I'm Angela Carboni. I'm the Director of Educational Excellence at Monash University and I was a recipient of a National Senior Teaching Fellowship in 2012. It's really important for academics to continually refine their teaching practices. We've seen so many changes in higher education. We've got uh, advances in technology. We've seen that through uh, MOOCs being, coming into play recently. We've got massification of the education. We have a number of students coming in from low SES backgrounds. We've got the introduction of the AQF and also uh, TEXA as well. We've um, recently just heard that you know there might be the potential of deregulation of the course fees. So from a student's perspective, they want to know that they're getting value for their money. Uh, so it's really important that students feel that their learning experience is a good one and that they are um, getting the learning outcomes that the course is set to achieve. From a regulatory perspective, the government wants to know that the, the courses that we're delivering are of the right standard, are of a high standard in Australia, and that are meeting all the regulations that are imposed on us. And then just from a personal perspective, from the teacher's point of view, they want to know that they're doing a good job and there's nothing better than making sure that you're contemporary and that the work you're doing is being valued. At Monash University, we really try and instill academics to in, um, improve and reinvigorate their teaching. And this is driven through our Better Teaching, Better Learning agenda, which is all about focusing on challenging aspects of your teaching. So you challenge yourself as, a, as an educator, your presentation style, how you support the students. You challenge your learning outcomes. Are they achieving the things that you want to achieve? Are they building the graduate attributes that you want to be built? You challenge your learning activities. Are they, are they stimulating good learning behaviours in students? Are these activities novel? Are they authentic? You also focus on the assessment as well. You know, are we, um, can we use the assessment to help students prepare for class? Can we use the assessment to help students um, learn inside class? And also, can we use the assessment to actually provide a measure of how much they've learned. We also need to think about the resources as well. What sort of resources are we giving our students? Are they easily accessible? Are they current? And are they useful? Okay, research into professionalising the academic workforce says that, uh, tells us that a lot of uh, new academics that come into to teaching come in without a teaching qualification. Many of them come in on a casual basis or a sessional basis. So we really need to think about how we're going to prepare these teachers for the role. So some, a recent piece of work um, that was conducted by Denise Chalmers and a suite of universities in Western Australia says that the, the, the most effective ways to prepare teachers uh, in, in their role is through building community of, communities of practice, having mentoring and reflective practice. So I've introduced the Peer Assisted Teaching Scheme as part of my National Senior Teaching Fellowship and it's been rolled out uh, across around 13 institutions in Australia and, and also now venturing uh, internationally. So the premise of the scheme is that it's not compulsory, it's really uptaken on a voluntary basis um, and this allows academics that want to reinvigorate their teaching through the use of a peer or a mentor to do so in a sort of non-threatening, collegial and supportive way. I think there's three critical success factors in making the peer assisted teaching scheme successful. Uh, first of all, there needs to be support from the senior executive within the, the faculty. So they really need to be making some decisions about how are they going to support the scheme, how they want the scheme to roll out. To roll out. So support might be through um, providing coffee vouchers to allow partners to, to meet and have com critical conversations, perhaps provide them with some time release or even through some uh, financial support as well. Secondly, there needs to be a PATS coordinated, so someone to ensure that the partnerships, uh, the partners that are, that are involved in the scheme are working towards a goal, that they're undertaking all the tasks as required and they've got some evidence to support the change that they're making has actually worked. And then finally you need you know, buy-in from people at the, at the um, forefront of, of teaching. Um, so they need to be willing to sort of 
take their, their courses and think about how they're going to change them, putting, you know, opening up everything and tackling, setting some goals around what they want to achieve, developing some strategies, overcoming their barriers and really using the student voice to help them make those changes but also listening to their peers, drawing on what the literature is saying and then also to reflect um, on, on their practice that they've done.